I'm Peter Steinberg at Steinberg Gallery, Art of the Dark, under the directionship of Vanessa Wyman. We're having combative, cooperative drawing this evening. Hi, I'm Melissa Wyman, and um, I'm an artist living in the Palo Alto area, but I work a lot in the Bay Area and in San Francisco, but I also travel with my artwork, and um, much of my work is collaborative or participatory, um, and I like to work with groups of artists to create events as well as work on my own type of artwork. Collaborative Combative Drawing um, came out of a project that I was doing previously called Fight Therapy. And Fight Therapy involved getting artists, or actually anybody for that matter, to um, choose a person that they wanted to grapple with. So um, my background comes from martial arts and I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've lived in a number of different countries training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and working as an artist. and. Um, I became very interested in cross-cultural experiences while training in a close contact martial arts. It, it brought out interesting kind of aspects that I wanted to work on through art. So aspects such as um, cross-cultural communication, uh, awkward moments in those sites of communication, um, and then also sparring when you're, when you're wrestling or grappling with a partner. Some partners you find a certain um, rhythm that you can wrestle with really easily. It's kind of a, a fun training experience and other times you go really, really hard and other times it's just awkward. So when I came back to the United States and I was working, uh, doing a master's degree at California College of the Arts, I decided that I wanted to bring that experience into the gallery. So I invited um, artist friends to start uh, inviting another person to come and do a fight therapy session with them for a while. Um, but of course there's no predicting what's going to happen because the artists come to the table with their own ideas and techniques um, just like anybody collaborating collaborating comes to the table with their own ideas and, and kind of maybe preconceived con uh, ideas or concepts of what they want to, to see happen and when that meshes it, it's going to be different every single time and so the collaborative combative drawing is where two artists they're drawing an animal and it can be their personal animal kind of like a power animal or an animal that they relate to they start at opposite sides of the paper start at the the rear end uh, and then work their way towards the middle and meet at the shoulders and they have a certain amount of time to do this and then when the whistle blows after about 30 minutes and they meet in the middle then the object of the, the objective is to draw on the other side, the partner side of the paper, with, without letting them do the same on their side. So there's going to be pushing and pulling, and that's where the combat starts. And that period will last for a handful of minutes, and then, um, then they get a chance to kind of fix it again. So they get another period of time to go over and correct what they want to, work kind of gently and collaboratively again for maybe 10 minutes and the whistle blows and then they combat each other again and then they get to work collaboratively again. So it's kind of, it's, it's a metaphorical and visual representation of working together as artists or working together as like human beings co-inhabiting the earth. <laughs> and so when they first come in, we're gonna, you know, breed each other and then um, we're gonna do a physical warm up. And part of the physical warm up is, uh, to get warmed up, so there are fewer, so there are no injuries. I'm, I um, am very careful about making sure that people are um, ready to take on this activity. So some of it's stretching, and then we're also going to start doing some techniques that are taken from self-defense or, or from jujitsu or different kinds of martial arts that I've done over um, the years that are specific to the activity, the drawing activity. So um, we will be doing some balancing work and um, uh, also get to learn what a fighter's stance is and kind of get our own center of gravity. 
and then also work on how to effectively move the other person, which also involves moving yourself in relationship to the other person, and then also what to do if someone keeps you from drawing, like if they grab your wrist and won't let you draw. There are some wrist break techniques that you can do so you can continue drawing. And then also how not to get hurt while you're doing this. And um, that can be a lot about like using leverage points but also using your own body sort of as a block to move the other person so that your arms are free to draw. Um, so by the time they actually get to the drawing they will have learned a few, I think, tools that are relevant in um, everyday life, but tools that are pertain to this activity mostly for, for successfully being able to draw while the other person is trying to stop them. There is a tradition, a long tradition of artists getting together and doing a collaboration that can sometimes be a little bit like even um, Warhol and Basquiat painted on each other's paintings and like painted out things and painted over. So there's, there's a tradition of that happening. But I really wanted to bring the physical aspect of the fight therapy into that idea of working together. And to me about the artwork is that the artists get outside of their comfort zones enough to kind of open up a new space a new space of um, discovery of, of their own work or their own personalities. So it's not choreographed. Doing martial arts and when you're actually sparring, it's not like a set, you do this to me and I'm going to respond this way. When you're sparring, it's kind of you have to respond in, in the moment. And um, I'm very interested in working more like getting, getting people into the present and being in the moment to create work where you don't necessarily know where it's going. A huge part of this project is kind of getting outside of comfort zones, being very in the moment, just responding to whatever you're, you're, you're given, um, and then seeing what the result looks like. Well, in the past, I've asked people to invite somebody that they wanted to challenge, um, that they wanted to, it's kind of a combination of wanting to challenge and collaborate with. I'm hoping that, you know, one, they might get to know each other a little bit more, and um, two, also just ex experience another way of art making. It isn't choreographed, it's not as um, planned out, it's kind of more responding to what's happening in the moment, and it really comes down to some like simple concepts in, in gesture making, in, in drawing and painting, and different ways to actually get the emotion of what you're trying to convey onto the piece of paper, um, the kind of spontaneity behind movement as well. So, but this, this time it's not just you in the paper, it's you and somebody else in the paper. So I'm hoping that they come away with just kind of um, uh, a new experience and then also something that might be pushing their own boundaries a bit and their own comfort levels. Um, because in, as artists and in, in arts, um, we kind of, we're encouraged to push our own boundaries and comfort levels, and I think that when we do, it actually um, can help evolve our own practices um, by, by doing that, whether it's, it's the experience with the other artwork, uh, artists that you're working with or whether it's the method that you're using. But yeah, I'm just hoping that it gets them um, uh, just another fresh look at maybe their own work. Well, I don't know what to say about it. It was uh, fun doing it. I don't think I've like made as finished a piece as some other people, but it's been, I don't know, it's kind of an energetic kind of thing, so what came out came out, you know? It's got some more interest and merit than I necessarily thought. It's a bit like when you have to sketch really fast, you know, as a timed exercise. It's like that, but with an added encumbrance, and that's not bad. It's not a bad thing, you know, like more challenges in drawing often help with you know, the drawing itself. Like, it's like when you have a confined brief or something, then that often helps your drawing a whole lot. And, and this is like just adding more challenges, so I, I feel like that's actually kind of useful. It's our mythical family creature created by my kids. It's uh, Jackack Acornisus. Half Jackack, half Pegasus, Jackass, half Pegasus, and half Unicorn, but I forgot the horn. So we're going to have one last battle, and I'm going to put the horn on it to make it complete.
It was really fun to collaborate and I already knew Peg and we even talked about what we we're gonna do ahead of time which was fun and like made our ideas come together um, and it was fun to fight too I mean it wasn't I felt like we were a good match like we didn't get too rough or we weren't too easy on each other and it was fun I liked it and it's nice we have time afterwards to kind of finish it and make it nice like artists always want to do. The thing that was the most fun was when we were practicing beating each other up we were so gentle. The minute that whistle blew and we had to get drawing we were animals. We were just crazy with each other. It was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun seeing our personalities change right in the middle of the whole thing. And then the sketch I think is going to be great. I mean I'm really loving the whole energy of it all. It evolved a little bit because initially we wanted to make the crow's head go right into the jaguar's mouth, but now they're like passing each other instead of like fitting right together. So, yeah, and we might do something kind of zany with the background, and yeah, it was good. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, like, was this what you expected? No, it's not what I expected at all. I thought we could like tussle and like do girl fighting, just kind of like, you know, wimpy girl fighting, but we really got into it and we were sh totally shoving each other out of the way. And it was very exhausting. <laughs> yes, yes, that was very difficult trying to draw and keep her from drawing. She's trying to keep me from drawing and, and trying to make it look like the vision that you have in your head as well. <laughs> I thought it was great. It was totally different than what I thought. I, I was, I, I mean, maybe I didn't think I would be capable of combat, but guess what? I was. <laughs> so it was really fun. So I was happy with it. Okay. Well, I actually really enjoyed doing it because normally I'm facilitating it and I don't get the opportunity to put my body into it. And, um, I think, like, yeah, I enjoy the activity, so sometimes I get more into the activity than what I'm actually drawing. So actually, I, I need to do a little bit more work on this, because <laughs> if I'm going to leave it up on the wall, I want to layer it and do some more painting. But um, the activity itself, and it's uh, working with somebody I don't know, is interesting as well, because during it, we get to ask each other a few questions as we're working, and then um, he was really good at, like, defending his territory and, and I had to I had to fight for it to try to get in there so that was um, yeah I, I can't help it I I really enjoy this activity <laughs> okay yeah this was great fun it was a lot of um, challenges to work on a piece be true to your own work but also to incorporate the other person's work and um, yeah, it was a lot of fun yeah Thank you. So here we are, we've just, um, we're finishing the collaborative combative drawing experience. People are putting the final touches on the work that they've done. And um, if you get a chance to take a look around, you can see the various works on the wall with like the different, different power animals, the spirit animals that they've drawn, the, the different uh, materials that they use, the different styles that they used. And so for the rest of the evening, um, it's just all about kind of doing the finishing touches and making it uh, a piece that they're happy to leave on the wall. I'm really excited that artists have come on board to do this project because it is, um, it, it takes a bit of bravery and guts, especially if they haven't met me yet um, and they don't maybe know what quite to expect. So um, I, I, I'm grateful too to the, the David Satino Scott and um, for, for Lynn for helping put this together and also for um, Peter Steinberg from the Steinberg Gallery for being um, brave, enough, brave enough and gutsy enough to decide to hold an event like this at his place. Very uh, 
uh, let's say, dialectical. So let's say the thesis and antithesis combine into the perfect synthesis of art. I had no expectations whatsoever, and I am very pleasantly surprised by how you can competitively uh, collaborate and a joint project. So thank you for coming and, and watching and participating, and um, I hope you've enjoyed it.